it's kind of like, get, don't want to get deep, but like therapy for me. Mm. So I was kind of a nerd in school. Mm. So it was kind of like an escape. Welcome to In The Common Room With, a show brought to you by Word on the Curb and The Open University. We'll be bringing together some of your favorite content creators and personalities who will be discussing balancing creative careers alongside education and learning, as well as finding out who went to uni and who didn't. I hate the phrase, have a backup. You and me both, babe, sorry. There you go. That's already gonna start an argument. <laughs> Don't even, bro. Each episode, they'll be joined by their family or friends, so we'll see what role they played in their journey and get a unique glimpse into their lives. So who knows what we'll find out. Hey guys, it's Henry, and today, in the common room, I am with two of my faves. You might have seen them from a very viral video. It is Iman Kellum and Papa Kellum. Uh, from the very beginning, I was creative and I knew this is what I wanted to do. <laughs> Basically, I was rebellious. <laughs> like, in a nutshell, I was rebellious. I was selling jollof rice in school yeah, and that was my, my, my hustle to get some equipment. Who was making the jollof rice? Um, no comment. I will not. I prefer not to speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. How are you guys? I'm good, we're good. We're all right. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. I just want to start off with a little icebreaker game, yeah? So, obviously, this whole thing is about university. You guys know the game Never Have I Ever? Yep. Yeah? Let's start off with the first question. Never have I ever been to more than five film premieres? Oh, Dad's thinking. I haven't. OK, I knew that was going to be it. I took him to one and he fell asleep. You didn't. Yes, I did. <laughs> I took him to one of these. We did, the, we did the carpet, did the photos, everything. And, and then you fell asleep. Just... Oh, because I'm too old school. I was screaming. The film wasn't that good, was it? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, cool. So, never have I ever lied about whose house I was sleeping over at. No. Haven't. <laughs> uh, you have. <laughs> Is this when you were younger as well? Yeah. Lie to the parents. Do you know what? Fair, we've all done it at some... Mm -hmm. he, he's lying. I actually, I actually haven't. They didn't let me do the sleepover thing, so I just stayed home. OK, fair. Yeah. That's what you're saying for now, don't we? It's because the cameras are here. Oh, uh, hey, <laughs> OK, OK, OK. Never have I ever stolen food from the pot. I don't lie. <laughs> I've never. <laughs> never? I've literally caught him. That's what I <laughs> <laughs> OK, never have I ever borrowed something without a parent knowing? OK, what did you borrow? I can't remember, but I've done it several you know times. That you, <laughs> you know you've taken something. I've done it several times, yeah. OK, what have you taken as well? A okay. biology book. <laughs> a biology book? Yeah. I feel like that's the most upstanding thing ever. You can, did you keep it? No, I returned it. <laughs> You're a stand-up guy. I love it. OK, never have I ever regretted being in the public eye. Ooh. Oh. Hard one. Yeah. yeah. Mm. At one point? Yeah. Yeah. OK. <laughs> he, lo he loves it. Loving the he loves it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at what point did you, like, kind of regret it? Kind of, like, privacy sometimes, you know? Of course. And, like, dating. Mm. Yeah. Like, dating, you said. Dating's hard, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, do you know how Because everyone knows who you are. Ish. Like, but, like, a lot of the times I've been on dates, they quote him. Really? All the time. What did they say? Like, oh, Funke wouldn't be happy about that. Ah, really? Uh, yeah, so I'm like, OK, <laughs> are you really quoting my dad for the whole day? I think they, fan I think they fancy him more than me. I'm scared. So, yeah. <laughs> OK, never have I ever blamed something on another family member. So if somebody's now broken the plate, it wasn't me, it was them. <laughs> OK, I love it. And last one, never have I ever broken something and not confessed. <laughs> what did you break, Papa Kellum? A big plate. <laughs> and you, Iman? Probably a cup or something as well, yeah. Did, did you guys hide it? Yeah. I disposed it. <laughs> you got rid of the evidence. <laughs> All the evidence. <laughs> I want to talk about Iman's uh, life growing up, what it was like as a child. So, Iman, growing up in Lewisham, South London, what was that like? It was interesting. Lucian was like definitely a melting pot yeah, for was. culture. Yeah. Um, there's so much going on in every different way. I grew up, I didn't grow up in Lewisham, but I grew up like kind of close to it. Lewisham used to be very scary. Yeah. 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 Very. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you kind of like navigate that and how, how did it mould you? Um, it was kind of a thing where my parents kind of tried their hardest to like just keep me away from the stuff, but also just like growing up in a local area, there were people that were older. Um, that were just making sure I wasn't getting into the stuff. Some people were involved themselves and they just made sure that 
I focused on what I was doing. Mm. So I was lucky enough to have that. And then I have my older sister as well. So, so like a tight unit around yeah, a tight you. unit, for sure. And uh, Papa Kellum, what, what was it like growing up in Nigeria and then transitioning to South London? Uh, it wasn't that sort of bad because I was partially raised in UK because I was yeah. born in Leeds. Oh, was it? And my parents took me back when I was um, six. Okay. So coming back was just... An easy... Back to base. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fairs. And so what was school like for you in Nigeria? Oh, education in Nigeria, they're very strict. Mm -hmm. So it's different than here where you have law and order. Mm -hmm. And the process was quite very tight as well. Would you say that um, Iman then had it a little bit easier educationally over here? I wouldn't say that because I'm always at his back. <laughs> if the teachers aren't doing it, he is. Yeah, <laughs> OK, so what age did you realise then that you wanted to do YouTube, Iman? Um, I think I stopped, so I, like, I was watching other people like Ray William Johnson and then like the older people. Um, and I, I was like 13, 14. Mm -hmm. So I started when I was like 14, so yeah. And you I, made it a career from then? Oh, so I didn't plan to make it a career. It was just something I was interested in. You know, like back in the day, everyone was just an MC or a footballer. It wasn't yeah. cool to be a YouTuber. Yeah, I mean. yeah. So, yeah. Okay, and so then Papa Kellum, what did you see for Eman? What did you kind of want him to be as he was growing up? I tried to work in partnership with him. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't want to be like my parent. Yeah. If they want you to be a doctor, you must be a doctor. If yeah. you want to be an engineer, you must be an engineer. Yeah. It's allowing them to express themselves yeah. and working together with them. That's the way I've read both of them. I love it. I'm half Nigerian as well, and there's okay. always something about those like lines of career paths. It's mm -hmm. either engineer, doctor, lawyer. Why only those three? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was very persistent about that as yeah. I've been like a backup yeah. and having your contingency plan. But he has shown me that he can do it mm -hmm. and I can see the strength in him, so I supported him. So then what do you reckon it is about like traditional culture in general that really makes parents want their children to want to pursue those particular lines of work? Right, because uh, we parents are trying to give them an option mm -hmm. of what they can do in life because even being so mobile, so obviously they need to learn different skills and then get on with it. If you didn't know that Iman was creative, do you reckon you would have pushed him maybe to do anything else creative? I think I will. Oh, I love that. I Because it's different to what you hear on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. So then with that being said, what opportunities did you see um, that are kind of different growing up in Nigeria as opposed to growing up here? Education-wide, there's stability in education mm. where you can just spend three years in education. Rather than Nigeria, you can spend about five years doing a degree. And as well, we went to a private school, so obviously there's stability, but not everybody can afford it in Nigeria. Of course, of course. And Iman, when you started, like, of course, being a YouTuber, especially back then, I don't think it was, like, that easy because you had to get equipment, everything else. Yeah. Did you have any, like, money-making schemes, I guess, to, to start up your career? Yeah, um, I saw jollof rice in school. You did? I did. <laughs> I Who saw... was making the jollof rice that um, No comment. I will not. I prefer not to speak. <laughs> this was a taking room for the pot that you was doing, Stop. isn't it? I prefer not to speak. <laughs> but, yeah, I was, I was selling jollof rice in school. Yeah. Yeah, and that was my, my, my hustle to get some equipment. And then my dad also... Um, helped me put money towards my first camera as well. So there was that. Okay, and yeah. I really love the fact that you helped um, your son like buy his first camera because my dad bought my first camera. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> and so what kind of made you want to do that? Because I wanted to work in partnership with him, mm. get him to know him better and support, it, and support him in any way that he wanted. Mm. What was it like seeing his like dream then come true? Is amazing. Hey guys, it's your girl Kirsty, and I hope you're enjoying this episode of In the Common Room With. We're so excited to be working with the Open University, so I thought I'd take this minute to tell you a little bit more about them and how you can take full advantage of everything they have to offer. The OU is a leading provider in distance learning and online courses, so if you're looking for more flexibility or autonomy whilst you study, this is the uni for you. The OU provides over 200 qualifications, all of which you can study from the comfort of your own home or wherever you are in the world. Just make sure you get that coursework done. If you want to find out more information, hit the link in the description to find out more. Enjoy the rest of the episode, guys.
Bye. What was Iman like in school? Give us the, the real. Uh, the way I've raised my kid is uh, I have communication book with the teachers. Mm -hmm. And every day I have the feedback. So if there's any action, like, because he goes to Saturday school and he does after school when he was young. Wow. So obviously in class, it may be more challenging mm -hmm. because the curriculum they are using in the class is different than the curriculum they are using because most of the teacher yeah. that teaches them on Saturday are Africans. Okay. So you would like to tell the teacher that you can do, and like let's talk about mathematics, yeah. that you can use another sort of format to do the math, yeah, yeah, yeah. where that can be seen as distractive in class. So I have to sit him down and tell him, this is what you do, this is what you do. Yeah. And you listen, because you know, once I see any negative information from the teacher, I will be mad. <laughs> Basically, I was rebellious. <laughs> like, in a nutshell, I was rebellious. Were you? Yeah, I was just, I was really rebellious. I just, I, why, though? Because I asked a lot of questions. Because I knew from young that, like, I wanted to do the creative stuff. There were mm. so many things that teachers would say to me. And I'd be like, but why, though? So you just questioned them on everything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not even in a rude way. Like, I'd ask them questions that they didn't like because they didn't have the answers. What, what would be an example of one of those questions? So, like, for, like, example, French rap. Mm -hmm. They were, like, forcing French on me. I wanted to do Spanish. Yeah. Because my sister was doing Spanish and was great at it, so I wanted to learn Spanish. Yeah. And they were just forcing me to learn French, and I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm not really going to be in France. So why <laughs> so do I, I, why do, why do, why do I need like, to know Why do I need to know the Pythagoras theorem? Yeah, and Pythagoras Who is that man? Mark, you know what I mean? <laughs> maths and stuff like that. So yeah. I always just ask questions, and they didn't really like that. But, like, in the stuff I enjoyed, like, there was no issues, I really, so... Okay, and obviously that means that you wanted to do more of the creator side. Yeah. What made you then want to start YouTube, especially because you said that not many people wanted to be a YouTuber mm. back in the early days of it. What made you want to start? Um, I guess, yeah, it was just a thing where like, I'd seen people like, from all different types of like, backgrounds in America mm. and some in the UK doing their thing, but there wasn't many. So I was like, I want to create some fun stuff. And it was kind of like, get, don't want to get deep, but like therapy for me. Mm. I was kind of a nerd in school. Mm. So it was kind of like an escape. Like, I created this character who I eventually became, mm. if that makes sense. So, like, building your confidence? Basically. Yeah, building my confidence, for sure. OK, yeah. incredible. And so, Iman, for you, what would you change about your education experience, if anything? Um, if I could change something, I guess it would be... Like, from the very beginning, like, I'm talking about, like, secondary school, like, having mm. just a proper support system, because I went to a quote-unquote art school mm. in the beginning, or a specialist school, but at the same time, they weren't really supportive of everything I was doing. And it was kind of like, there was an attitude towards like my dreams and aspirations. And it was like, you can't do it. But I feel like everyone has that, don't they? Yeah. Like, yeah the teacher's like, oh, you're, you're thinking. Have so one, one silly science teacher. <laughs> <laughs> My science teacher was pretty cool though. But no, 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 mine no. was terrible. Like he used to tell me that I can't do, I can't do. Who taught you? Anyway, well, you're here now. So yeah, what, just, sorry, different show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so let's go into university life, yeah? So, Iman, growing up with um, traditional Nigerian values in the household, did you feel any cultural pressures to go to uni? Mm. I wouldn't say pressures, but I just feel like I've got an older sister who literally went to university, did mm. languages and law, bilingual babe, do you know what Whoa, I mean? Whoa, yeah, everything. yeah. Very successful in what she's doing now as well. So I was like, rah, like... I wanna, I wanna like be levels or do something. I just wanna make my parents proud at the end of the day. Mm. So that was like the most important thing for me because I know they grinded to get over here and make stuff happen. Mm. So yeah, uni was something I considered, but I wouldn't say I was pressured. No. I love that. But then Papa Kellum, of course, we're hearing now that you didn't pressure him, which we love. But we know that within the community, like these pressures do exist. Where do you reckon they come from, and why? Why do they exist in the first place? Um, I think Nigerian as a culture, uh, their parents actually want their kids to go to uni. Mm. I also wanted him to go to uni, but I'm not going to put pressure on him because Esther has been in university and he doesn't. All what I need to see, to look into, is the contingency plan. Mm. What is the alternative? What can he fall on if the YouTube did not work? But he's been very lucky the, the YouTube is working for him. Yeah. What, what would you have hoped his contingency plan would have been? Going to uni. <laughs> Initially, I wanted to go and do uh, information, no, not information, media. Right. Interesting. Right. So what would have changed your mind then to kind of, if there was an ideal situation in which you could go to university and still keep being as creative as possible, what kind of would that look like? 
I feel like there would need to be like some kind of balance, especially with my, 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 like, my job. Like sometimes it's not even on my own YouTube channel. Like I get asked to do things on other platforms and stuff, mm -hmm. just having enough time. And then sometimes I'd have to go to America. So like being in school, then going to America, coming back and it's, it, I just need a bit more free time. Mm. And so I've got a question for you. If you were able to have Wi-Fi anywhere, yeah, yeah, and be able to do distance learning, do you reckon you would have been able that would have been something that you would have done. Yeah, I would have given it a go, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm no dad would have loved it as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as he's able to do both, yeah, right, and course. actually create a balance, yeah. I'm sure you would have wanted him to do uni and his career at the same time. Yeah. What do you reckon um, would have, not improved, but how do you reckon it would have helped him to do both at the same time? I think the environment where he is, is more important. Okay, let's head into work life, yeah? So, what was your first job, Iman? I worked in a video game shop at 16. Okay, and what was your first creative job? Um, my first creative job, I guess, is YouTube. Okay. Because I was getting paid for it. So. Yeah, of yeah. course. And um, Papa Kellum, of course, you've seen Iman on telly. What was your first um, reaction to seeing him on TV? I was slightly happy and I was slightly conscious about maybe he's going to make it or not. Okay. But obviously, I just flow with it. Yeah, you enjoyed the show when it was on. Yeah. <laughs> and when did you realise that you could make a full-time career out of creative projects in general? Um, when I got my first paycheck from YouTube. Really? Yeah, because I was like, whoa, OK, this is money. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So. And that made you want to just like continue on with it, I'm guessing? Yeah. OK. Sure. And then, Dad, you kind of got involved with the content as well. Were you a bit like cautious at first when you were getting involved? Not really, because I'm right there to support him. Yeah. Yeah, it was OK. And you was lacking the fame anyway. We knew that from the start. Yeah, you, you love it. You love it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I got scared. <laughs> you love it was it. like, no. Nah, he, nah. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. What's it like creating content with Iman? Emmanuel is very demanding, and he will tell you, this is what you do, you're too forgetful. <laughs> you can do this, do Not this. Don't under the bus. <laughs> yeah. He said that you need to learn it, you need to get this one, we're going to start again. Yeah. You know, stop the, the, the shooting, then start again to do the video again about two, three times. Yeah. Eventually, I get through okay. it after the fourth. So I'll, I'll read him a question and be like, what does that mean? Which one is this? Can you say that again? And I'm like, Dad, come on. I, I need verification. Please, I a want star to... needs his time to yeah. shine. He's okay. with me, he's with me. He's with me. And um, Papa Kellen, when did you first get recognised outside? Do you remember what that was like? That was in um, April 2010, yeah. on the 27th. Wow. I was going... Dad, what are you talking about? We weren't even doing YouTube videos back then. Yeah, we are. We, well, you didn't make... We, we, we started in 2010. No, we done one in 2011. Which one? The, the, the one where you were reading the, the note, the Alpha Kenny thing. No, no, I'm talking about the prank one. The prank wasn't 2010, that was 2014. <laughs> Maybe it's the prank. I, I, maybe I've forgotten the day. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot it today. He was all given 27th of April. I thought, I thought it's, uh, it's, it's February 2010 yeah, February that we did the prank. February 2014. Is when we did it. Yes. So it's going to be... Uh, How did we go back four it, years? No, no, it's going to be May in that year. May? Yeah. Are you sure it was May? Yeah, it was May. On the 27th yeah. of May? Yeah, yeah. OK. I see why people love you. You are so funny. So what was it like, like getting noticed in the street? Everybody wants to take a picture with me, and I'll just do it. <laughs> I know that even after this, me, me and you, we have to take a photo. Okay. Instagram needs to know that I met you today, OK? okay. <laughs> All right. So what advice would you give to younger people, Iman, wanting to work in the creative industry? I'd say just go for it, you know? Um, back then, it was way harder to grow on YouTube. Mm. There's so many other platforms that are available now that literally will give you that instant virality, but what you depend to do with it is down to you. Mm. Um, but yeah, go for it. How would you like tell them to navigate getting into something that can be so untraditional and sometimes a little bit uncertain? Mm. I'd say, I, I, you know what? I hate the phrase, have a backup. I don't like it because yeah. I feel like it's saying you don't believe in your main. Mm -hmm. But work, have something on the side, you know, that you can be doing. I won't call it your backup, but have something on the side you can be doing while you pursue what you're going for. Mm. So I would say that, yeah. And do you reckon right now that you've got a really good work-life balance? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, how do you maintain it, please? Some of us need help. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I take, I take regular detoxes. Yeah. I mean, like, I come off the internet. I don't even tweet anymore. Like, I come on and pre when something's going on. <laughs> and then I come on Instagram and see what's going on. Yeah. Whatever's popping. And then I take a break. I take a long break. I just like 
my own time. I spend a lot of time with my pops and my family. Of course. And um, my friends as well, like, yeah. So I just choose to chill out, you know. Cool. Let's take it back a bit, yeah, to that viral video, the viral video. Literally <laughs> my favourite thing ever. And oh. you know what I used to do in school? So I understand Yoruba. I used to be the one that was translating to everybody <laughs> exactly what Dad was saying. Mm. What made you, first of all, want to make that video in the first place? Like, me and my pops had made video. We'd made a couple videos up until that point. We'd done, like, Q&As and stuff like that. They're not on the internet anymore, but, mm. like, there was just stuff we'd done early days. So, yeah, we were doing that already. And then the prank was just something I just really wanted to do. Because yeah. my, my, my dad is, like, annoyed. He's hysterical. Like, <laughs> so funny. Some of the stuff that comes out <laughs> of my pops' is mouth. I'm aware of this. <laughs> Literally, I say that till this day. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, so but, funny. Yeah. But the, the fact that you must, you were really comfortable to even get your dad involved, because mm. I can't imagine pranking my mum. I would be kicked out of that house. <laughs> so how did you know your dad would be cool with it? Well, I didn't. <laughs> That's the thing. So I took I took a risk and the risk paid off. Um, yeah. As you saw, um, a broom came into play. <laughs> so um, yeah, like I just I just I just took the took the risk and I was lucky enough that it paid off. For sure. Yeah, and it's great that it did as well. And you would have had to be so strong minded anyway to continue that entire journey because, like you said before, you two were doing Q and As, yeah. but obviously from that video it was like. Whew. So what made you want to maintain that like? perseverance to keep the YouTube up. I feel like, because yeah, like from the very beginning I was creative and I knew this is what I wanted to do. And I've seen so many people come before me, mm. um, have a moment like that and just vanish, like evaporate, literally there's so many people. Mm. And I was like, nah. It's not gonna be me. Yeah, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna, I wanna make something of this, you know? Like, yeah. I do want to have a career in mind and I wanna push towards that, so. Mm. So dad, how did you feel when you watched the video back on YouTube? Hey Joe, it looks so funny to me that I can actually Behave in that manner, yeah. like <laughs> screaming, shouting, calling Funke. <laughs> yeah. It was actually a shock <laughs> yeah. that I would a 16 year old yeah, yeah. impregnated a 14 year old. Yeah. You were like, no. <laughs> then I was thinking about the legals as well, surrounding how you have to contest social services, oh, raising God. the kill. Yeah. That's why I was calling my wife that. Yeah. And she was not even at home. Yeah. <laughs> and even in it, like, obviously, you found out it was a prank at the end. Why didn't you ever say, because I can just imagine my mum saying, that's not going anywhere. You're not going to put that on no YouTube, no nothing. Did you agree to it going off He didn't YouTube? say to me he's going to put it on YouTube. Okay, fair. <laughs> <laughs> he just did it, but then yeah. obviously the virality of it yeah. made you okay with it after. Yeah. Okay, fair. I love that. And how did you continue to encourage him? Because Iman, Iman has spoken about the fact that people have that viral moment mm. and suddenly they don't have anything else after that. Mm. So how did you make sure he like kept up the momentum? Me and my son, we talk a lot about stuff. Mm. We are like parties, you yeah. know. <laughs> we confine on each other. If we have any problem, we talk about it and we look into alternative that he can do. Yeah. And I just let him to it. Mm. You know, if there's an issue, he'll come back to me and tell me. Of course, of course. So Iman, what's life saying for you right now? Um, it's good. Yeah. Relax, like I said, I take a lot of time, I feel like with family and friends and stuff, but like, it can get hectic. Mm. End of last year was really hectic, so I just took some time off. But yeah, like a week can range from a ton of Zooms, Zoom meetings. In, Zoom meetings. <laughs> Even though the pandemic's over, still yeah. Zooms, in person meetings, and yeah. then, like speaking with movie studios about potential things. Right. Well. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. As in like acting things? Um, <laughs> um something. Um, um, <laughs> something like that. The political. Yeah. Kung, 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 kung. <laughs> okay, like the political Igaga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, <laughs> things, things like. Things. Yeah, okay. Things that are film related. That's all he's going to give us, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. The star that he is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll stop it. <laughs> <laughs> So, Iman, last question for you. Mm. What advice then would you give to young people wanting to get into creative careers? Mm. And maybe also wanting to study as well, because of course you didn't go to uni, but mm. someone who's looking to go to uni and be creative at the same time, mm -hmm. what kind of advice would you give them? Well, I mean, if, if you could like intertwine the two, like and maybe even if you're doing something creative and you can use it for school work as well, like do that. And like, if there's somewhere that's flexible enough for you to be able to balance the both, then go ahead and do it. Mm. For sure. And then what would you change about your educational journey so far? Um, what I would change about my educational journey, just like being able to be flexible um, in like, like these, these times now. And then like just having supportive teachers back when I was younger, you know, like I 
didn't really have supportive teachers. There were, there were like, you know, like the TAs in school. They were really like backing it, but yeah. aside but not the main that, teachers. Not the main teachers. That one person, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> Papa Keller, what advice would you give to parents who have a creative child? Uh, I would just say they should work in partnership with their kids, and they should listen to them very carefully, because don't let us use this African culture. You got to do this. Mm. And as well, because of the law in this country, you cannot just push any child to do anything they, want, they don't want to do. So just being supportive with your child. Mm -hmm. And what's the importance of that word partnership as well? The importance of partnership that they'll be able to relate to you on the on same level, and they'll be able to talk to you regarding anything. Mm -hmm. So that's engaging them. You're actually engaging them as well. What kind of tips would you actually give to parents to create that partnership? Like, what can they actively do to make sure they're motivating their creative child? Uh, the first thing they have to do is to get to know what the child likes or what he wanted, and then try to create an environment where they'll be able to speak to you directly. Mm -hmm. Don't scare them away like right. our parent does. Mum. <laughs> And then try to work with them. Yeah. Try to know who they are. And then they'll be able to listen to you. Mm. That's the little I can give. It's important. That. Yeah. Thank you so much. This has been In the Common Room with Iman Kellum and the great Papa Kellum. <laughs> and do you remember what class you better sleep in? Um, <laughs> maybe everyone. <laughs> When she could walk, she would always dance, whether it's out of beat or in beat, whatever. I kind of thought, oh, everyone that's doing it is doing it for fun because it was fun. <laughs> I didn't realise it was an actual career until I got older. Oh.